Manhattan prosecutors and former President Donald Trump's hush money case are asking the judge to impose a gag order ahead of the trial. They argue Trump has a, quote, long history of public and inflammatory remarks about people involved in his legal cases. Prosecutors want to bar him from making comments or directing others to do so that could interfere with the case or harass those involved, including their families. Jury selection begins on March 25th. So let's bring in Jessica Levinson. She is a CBS News legal contributor and a professor at Loyola Law School. Jessica, very good to see you. This is not the first time, though, that the president has dealt with a gag order. So how, how do orders like this benefit the parties involved? And, and does one side tend to benefit more than the other? Well, in this case, the prosecution thinks that they would be able to benefit by ensuring that this trial can proceed without the inflammatory remarks that we've seen in the past. And as you said, the prosecution is asking for this as basically pointing to past behavior, saying we have to protect the prosecutors, we have to protect the court staff, we have to protect the witnesses. And all of that means we have to protect the administration of justice. You know, we've been here before where we've talked about protecting jurors and protecting jurors in their ability to consider just the facts and the law. So in this case, I think it is clear that the prosecution thinks that this would benefit them. I think we can expect the former president to make the same arguments that he always does, which is that this is a court trying to silence him, literally trying to gag him, and that this is an infringement of his First Amendment rights. And Jessica, we are just getting news right now that uh, former President Trump is also trying to block Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen from testifying in this case. Uh, what are the chances that that would actually be successful? I, I don't think that that would necessarily be successful to block all of their testimony. Now, there may be some detailed arguments about whether there are, there are some things that they would testify to which would not be relevant or would be more prejudicial than relevant and probative. But when it comes to those witnesses, I think they have a key story to tell, because let's remember, this is a case about allegedly falsifying business records, saying that payments to Michael Cohen were legal payments, whereas in reality, the prosecution says those were payments made in order for Trump to silence Stormy Daniels to make sure that the story didn't get out to ensure that he could win the election. And therefore, these payments were made in furtherance of trying to win the election. They seem to me to have very useful information on those questions. Now, all of this is happening while former President Trump's legal team is appealing his historic $454 million New York civil fraud judgment that he lied about his wealth to grow his business. But filing an appeal won't pause enforcement of this judgment. So why would his team do this without securing a stay? That's right. So he has until March 25th, which is, of course, the same day that the hush money payment trial begins in order to secure that stay. And I know that reporters have been asking his attorneys, why wasn't this required now or why wasn't this included in your notice of appeal, I should say. What I think people should understand is that paying the money now would stay the judgment in the sense that it would stop interest from accruing. Separately, what Trump can do is try and stay the requirement that he does, in fact, pay. My understanding is that under the New York rules, that actually is fairly complicated. And that may be why we're seeing this delay here. Jessica Levinson, thank you very much. Thank you.